time to spotlight the Fed meeting. It began today. The Federal Open Market Committee meeting is underway. It's a two-day meeting. Tomorrow we'll find out the answers, the outlook. Andrew Brenner is with us, head of international fixed income securities at Nat Alliance Securities. I mean, look, we have three central banks in, I believe, 32 hours, something like that. So um, what's the big picture and what are these banks all grappling with? Well, it starts off at around midnight tonight with the Bank of Japan. You know, it's about a 50-50 shot as to whether they raise rates. The only reason they really need to raise rates is because uh, they need to support their currency. But the reality is they're going to stop buying the amount of JGBs that they've bought. So I think they're going to have some trouble with interest rates. Meanwhile, the JGBs seem to do better overnight. I don't think the Bank of Japan decision is going to have that much of an effect. The Fed tomorrow, on the other hand, is not going to lower rates, even though two very senior Fed governors, uh, that retired Fed governors, uh, Alan Blinder, former vice chairman of the Fed, yeah. very respected guy, as well as Bill Dudley, former head of the New York Fed, as well as former uh, Goldman Sachs economist, they both came out, uh, Blinder yesterday, Dudley at the end of last week, and said the Fed needs to cut rates now. And they mean now, meaning tomorrow. And there's just no way that can happen. You know, I mean, last I looked, it was like a 4% chance. So the Fed, with, with 25 to 1, is not going to cut rates tomorrow. But the question is, how will they set it up for September? Right now, September looks like a slam dunk, right. 110, 115%. But you know, one of the problems that Powell has is a very important unemployment number is coming out Friday. And if that number shows weakness, like we think it's going to be a little weaker than expected. In fact, City thinks the unemployment rate could go, could go to 4.2. That would trigger the SOM rule, meaning a recession. Won't happen, a recession. But you could still trigger it. The Fed's going to look kind of silly, you know, that they should have really been easing back in June. And now they've wasted two months of June and July. And the first time they're going to be able to ease is September, right before an election. Right, right. Yeah, and, you know, when you hear from, from Blinder and Dudley, you know, why don't they heed the wor you know, the worries and the concerns and make the move? But the Fed usually tries to translate what they're going to do. We, I've been surprised before. Remember, there, there's been cuts or moves in between meetings, right? Um, we've seen that, but it's so rare over 20 yeah, years, cut, you know? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I've been in the business a long time, and I have seen it. But usually it signifies something major is happening, like an event that you can't foresee, maybe right. bank failures or something like that. I, right. don't, I don't see that on the horizon. So I don't think the Fed's going to ease tomorrow. I don't think they're going to ease in August, even if there's a bad unemployment number. I think they're going to wait till September. And what about and 50? What about 50 in September? If the unemployment number is bad on Friday, and the CPI number, the next two CPI numbers are better, and the unemployment number, the next unemployment number, I guess it would be the first week of September is bad, then yeah, I can see him going 50. That, that wouldn't be out of the question. Right. But right now, that's not built in. Right. And uh, so when you look at the jobs report, what are you going to break down within that jobs report? Why is it so important? It's not just non-farm payrolls. There's so many parts of that report. Well, you know, I got a kick out of watching John Farrow, if you don't mind me quoting someone the other day. And he said, this is the most important jobs report since the last jobs report. And, and you know, the point is, yeah. it's, it's always critical. Yeah. As we're getting closer to a Fed move, the numbers become more critical. And I think, I think we're seeing a lot of weakness, but there's still immigration is, is very difficult to, to gauge. And the numbers could be higher. The numbers could look OK. I mean, people were talking today, the jolts number came out. It was a little higher than expected. But when you look at the quicks, quits ratio and the hiring ratio, they showed very weak. And, and a lot of people can explain the higher jolts number to ghost jobs, jobs that were put out a long time ago that have never been taken down. <laughs> I will tell you that I was with one of my old college buddies whose daughter works for Indeed. And she was telling me how many people Indeed has laid off over the last year. And if, if Indeed is laying off, then the, then, then the hiring can't be as good as, as people anticipate. So I do think the economy is weaker. However, even if the SOM rule gets triggered, I don't see a recession. I haven't seen a recession for a long time. You know, the fact we just had the longest inverted yield curve, which right. supposedly, 
supposedly signifies a recession, and that didn't happen. And I don't see a recession now, but I continue to see a weakening, and there's no reason for the Fed to be at five and a quarter, five and a half. It should be more like 4% and maybe get down to three and a half. And look, home prices in the 20 major U.S. metro markets up 6.8% in the last 12 months, ending in May. Um, you still have home prices that are high. Interest you know, rates we'll, we'll, that are, are relatively high, but off, right? Yeah, interest rates are lower, maybe about 50 basis points. But you know what? I think there's something unusual going on with housing. I think a lot of houses are being kept off the market because people don't want to sell their homes because then if they sell their homes, they then have to move from a 3% mortgage to a 7% mortgage. So I think there's an artificial amount of, of strength in the home prices because there's so few homes for sale. But if you start bringing mortgage rates down to about five and a half, and as you just said, about six and a half, six and three quarters yeah. right now, yeah. bringing down to five and a half, I think a lot of homes are going to come on the market. And I think uh, against against the normal opinion of most, instead of lower interest rates causing higher home prices, I think lower interest rates are going to cause more ha homes to come on the market. And I think you'll start seeing weakness in homes. Yeah, I'd like to go back to um, the Bank of Japan and the yen. Investors sure. have borrowed um, against the yen, they have borrowed yen to fund purchases That's for right. U.S. technology. And so if the Bank of Japan were to raise and the Fed were to cut, which seems to be the plan, you know, that actually changes the differential, reduces the yield of differential. So, and we've seen tech being hit over the last time period of time, let's say near term. What do you think, how's the yen fitting into our tech story? Maybe a little more than we think. Well, look, the yen carry trade, which is your, what you're referencing, is true amongst all major currencies uh, all, a lot of countries' bonds, Brazil is one, Mexico is another, where people like to buy the higher yielding uh, bonds from other, other countries and play that trade. Now, the yen really rallied uh, out of nowhere, uh, uh, first with a Bank of Japan intervention, and then it, it, it grew some more legs and went even further. But it, uh, we're starting to see a little weakness in the yen right now, as, as, as we're seeing strength in the dollar because the Fed is the laggard. The Fed is the only one that it will not have lowered rates, except Bank of Japan, which is always in a different situation. Europeans have lowered once, the Canadians have lowered twice, right. and I do think that the Brits will lower on Thursday morning, not that I really care about what the Bank of England's doing. But so I think that, yes, that's true, but I think there's a lot more going on with technology. I think, I think we've seen a lot of reallocations uh, just look at what the Russell 2000 has been doing. Sure. I mean, it's outperformed the NASDAQ and the S&P by record amounts over the last two weeks. Even though it had a bad day yesterday, this morning when I walked in here, it looked like it was doing better. All right. Andrew Brenner, thank you so much. Great to see you of Nat Alliance Securities. Thank you. Thank you.